So let's go back into a reminder. It's been a long time since I've seen some of you. Um, let's go back to see how we can solve multi-step problems, all right? Now remember, whenever you guys see parentheses, you guys should automatically think distributive property. Just, uh, hey, I can do distributive property and I can at least simplify the problem. So remember, distributive property states that any number outside your parentheses means to multiply times every term inside the parentheses. Therefore, I have negative nine is greater than or equal to, negative eight times one is a negative eight, negative eight times a positive six is B is a negative 48B. Then I still have this minus one here. Now, a lot of these multi-steps are very confusing, and the reason why is they put multiple terms on the same side, all right? So to help you guys out when you're doing with multiple terms, the biggest mistake that students do is they say, oh, I can, you know, add one, add one. Well, just, you gotta make sure that, remember, when you're doing your addition properties of equality, you gotta do it on one side of the inequality, you have to do it on the other side of the inequality. When you do this, you're doing it to the same inequality, so that is an invalid step. When they're on the same side of the inequality, just rearrange them so they're next to each other. So negative nine is greater than or equal to a negative eight minus one minus 48B. Now you guys can see this is pretty easy to, to solve. Negative eight minus one is gonna be negative nine. All right, so now we can solve our two-step equation. Now remember I need to get undo what's happening to my V. So you throw it undo what's addition or subtraction. That's a negative nine, so that nine is subtracting from my V, so I need to add the nine. And I get zero is greater than or equal to a negative 48V. Well, that's okay because that's actually pretty helpful because now to get rid of the negative 48, I divide by negative 48. So therefore I have zero is greater than or equal to V. All right? So if you guys remember, there's a couple things. I told you guys how to do the test points, right? And the test points, guys, are very helpful, especially when you have your variable to the right, because um, a lot of you are going to make mistakes, because you will remember that, oh, when the inequality sign, I'll just put that graph going that direction. But Alex, we have to be careful, because let's draw a number line. What I always like to do is say, say my inequality out loud. This says zero is greater than or equal to V, or all my numbers. Or if I was gonna kind of say it backwards, this says V is less than or equal to zero. So what does V represent? V represents our numbers, we don't know, right? Yes. So if I say it backwards with my variable first, all numbers, which are V, I have to be less than or equal to zero. So therefore, I could either rewrite it as V less than or equal to zero, or what we can do is do our test points. And let's pick, let's pick negative two and two. So you're gonna plug both of those in for your options. So you can say zero is greater or equal to negative two. Is that true or false? Is zero greater than or equal to negative two? True or false? True, right? Is zero greater than or equal to two? That's false. So therefore that point is true, that point is false. Our main point that we're testing is zero. Since it's greater than or equal to, our shortcut is we fill that in. Remember, whenever it's equal to, that's a closed circle. And then it just remembers, uh, guys, you remember, do we shade towards the true statements or towards the false statements? Wow, anybody? True statements, thank you. And there you go, you're gonna shade towards the true. That means, all numbers less than zero or equal to zero make our inequality true. And now our inequality is happy because it's true. Yeah. Yeah.